There is a difference between being jealous and zealous. In jealousy, you think about individual aims. Whereas in zealousy, you are thinking about the spirit of your whole community. Ali ibn Abi Talib used to say, there would be no adultery in any community if males were zealous about their wives and the sisters around them. The idea in Islam amongst the most important ideas is that a person needs to consider those who are around him of the utmost importance. I, if I am with a girl, yes, she may be my wife, but I also have to consider other girls as my sisters, not walk around like a fox thinking about every girl as a prey. So here was number four. And number five, she attacked Islam by saying the reason hijab came in was a psychological reason. What psychological reason? She said woman has an inferiority complex in the time of Islam. Woman had an inferiority complex. The idea being that woman had an inferiority complex. Why? Because in Judaic and Christianic conditions and traditions, you find people who are saying that the head of every man is God, and the head of every woman is the man. So the idea was that in Judaism, for example, when a lady is in her menstrual cycle, in Judaism you must separate with her not only in the sexual world, but completely. You don't go near her at all. Whereas in the religion of Islam, on the contrary, we didn't make females inferior. We made some of the greatest females become the masters of par- the mistresses of paradise. As an example, Mary and Asiya and the sister of Musa, Khadija, Fatima were all raised to the highest status. As an example, you find that the female baby in the religion of Islam, the female baby used to be buried alive in Arabia. Whereas Islam brought about the female to come towards the religion and to understand that the female has the rights of a male. And hence one noticed Ammar ibn Yasser in certain traditions, it is narrated that his parents, in certain traditions, although some differ, it is narrated that his parents came towards the religion of Islam because of Islam not giving the people an inferiority complex. Why? Ammar bin Yasser, who were his parents? Yasser and Sumayyah. They were both his parents. The idea was that in Arabia they may have been idol worshippers. The idea was that there was an idol within the house. They come within the house one day, Ammar comes in. When Ammar comes in, what happens? He accidentally hits the idol. The idol falls on the ground and smashes. At this moment, Yasser, he looks at Ammar. He says, Ammar, you've just broken the idol. How is this acceptable? He says, oh my father, if I've just broken something which you worship, and it can't protect itself. How can you then think about it protecting you? At this moment, yes, Sumayya said, Oh, Ammar, where have you heard such things from? To which Ammar bin Yasser replied, I have heard such things from my prophet. Today he told me that why is it that the female bur- the baby is buried alive after a few days? At this moment, Sumayya begins to cry. And she begins to cry for what reason? Yasser tells Ammar, he says, Ammar, your mother had two older sisters. They were both buried alive. But the second one, when she was being buried alive, imagine the scene, brothers and sisters. Imagine the idea that you may have a baby who is killed or anything along those lines. Imagine the scene that this baby is being buried alive. As the baby is being buried alive, the baby was putting her hands out. Yasser says that your grandfather was deeply affected by this. Because when he saw his second child buried alive but putting her hands out as she was being buried, He said, I swear, if I have a third daughter, I will not bury her alive. At this moment, Sumayya looks at Ammar, she says, if Muhammad has come to raise the level of the female, then me and your father will come towards the religion of Muhammad. So here you find, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alim. So here you find the idea that Fatima Marnisi and her likes can be replied to from every angle. But how do I look at the hijab Quranically? How am I as a Muslim? meant to explain the hijab Quranically. We find the hijab needs to be understood Quranically because the hijab is looked at from three angles in the Quran. Socially, physically, spiritually. Socially, physically, spiritually. Many of us are wearing hijab physically. Too many. Too many wear it physically. Everyone can come and wear physical. But the Quran is telling you there's other angles to the hijab. There's a social angle and there's a spiritual angle. In the social angle, there are certain verses that need to be understood. As an example, the first one, Surah 24, verse number 27. Ya ladina amanu, la buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta ala ahliha. O you who believe, do not enter houses other than your houses until you actually give a call or ask for permission. In many of our communities today, it is similar to what Arabia was with the time of the Prophet. 
In Arabia, in the time of the Prophet, people used to just walk into a house. And what they would do, it doesn't matter if the girl was wearing hijab, they'll just walk in, Ya Allah, no, there wasn't even a Ya Allah in those days. On the contrary, someone would just walk in, are you wearing your hijab? If you're not, just put it on quickly. In our communities today, unfortunately, it's on the same area, the same social area, that sometimes you see certain people, he knows, for example, his cousin is in the house. And we have an unfortunate idea that our cousin is allowed for us to look at her in any way because she's my cousin. No, she's not allowed. If she's your wife, yes. But if it's your cousin, you can't just walk into the house. You come forward and you say, Ya Allah. Or you come forward and you say, Assalamu Alaikum. Because unfortunately, many of our people, because he thinks the girl, he has seen her or he has brought up with her, he simply walks into the house, you see her straight away, rushing to put on her hijab. The problem is you've already shown half your hair. That's the problem. Because even you see sometimes when you rush into a place, if the half the hair is showing and then she covers up completely, you have already made the damage. Because if the hair is still, there is no female who can sort out her hijab in 30 seconds. Impossible. A female needs more time. She needs to make sure there is hair which isn't sticking out. Because in Arabia, it used to be the same situation. Arabia, the man would walk in. He wouldn't even ask for permission. The Quran says, فَإِن لَمْ تَجُودُوا فِيهَا أَحَدًا فَلَا تَدْخُلُوهَا If you don't find anyone inside the house, do not enter. وَيَنْقِلَ لَكُمْ أَرْجِعُوا فَرْجِعُوا And if you are told, leave, then leave. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا بُيُوتًا غَيْرَ مَسْكُونَ There is nothing wrong with you to enter. But we are warning you now, Arabia, that hijab has a social aspect. That when you enter someone's house, make sure you give out a call. And you know, sometimes we have certain people in our communities who when he gives a call, you will know straight away he's coming in. The voice is pretty loud. But sometimes in our communities, there are certain people who when they enter, there is no call. And you find that the mixing occurs here. Even another verse on the social aspect was related to the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Him say Allahum. Himself. Where the Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tadkhulu buyuta al-nabi illa an yu'zana lakum ila ta'amin ghayra nadhirina ina. Do not enter the houses of the Prophet Muhammad for a piece of food until you are given permission. You must be given permission. وَلَكِنْ إِذَا دُعِيتُمْ فَدْخُلُ فَإِذَا طَعِمْتُمْ فَانْتَشِرُ وَلَا مُسْتَأْنِسِينَ لِحَدِيثِ Look what the Quran says. When you enter the house of the Prophet Muhammad, when you enter, make sure you enter and you are invited. And when you are invited and you enter, then come in and make sure you sit down and do not stay for extra talk. And what used to happen was some of these companions would walk into the house of the Prophet Muhammad without, without asking for any permission. Subhanallah, they tell me these are the people who must leave me after he dies. They walk into the house of the Prophet Muhammad without asking for permission. The Quran says make sure you ask for permission. Highlighting one of the biggest social aspects in hijab. Because many things go wrong in our community when the door is open between a female and a male to be alone in a house. Because if my husband is away and I find that my cousin and me are sitting together, I don't care whose cousin you are. When a girl is with a guy, shaitan is the third of the three. And you found many instances, unfortunately, within our communities where the guy, where the female will say, my husband will be back in 10 minutes. Come, come, sit down. This come and sit down can destroy communities, true? They come and sit down. I wait, my husband is coming. Yes, you may sit in another room, no problem. But if you're going to sit in another room, I am going to move somewhere else. I am not going to come and sit and welcome you. How are you saying? How's life? Let's sit down half an hour. The husband still hasn't come. It doesn't work like that in the religion of Islam. In the religion of Islam, there are laws to be observed. And there is a hijab that has to be built. Here is the social aspect of hijab. Then there is the physical aspect. And the physical aspect is renowned in the Qur'an that many people come and quote these verses about the physical aspect. Where the Qur'an says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُ فُرُوجَهُمْ What did the Qur'an say? Say to the believers, يَغُضُّ Now when you look at the word يَغُضُّ We find يَغُضُّ does not mean you close your eyes. No, you don't close your eyes. You don't have to walk around, you know, with the eyes closed. What you do is that you actually come and you lower your gaze. Ali ibn Abi Talib in the battle of Jamal tells Imam Hassan, he says, Hassan, even if all the arrows come towards you, you remain firm in your place. And then he says to him as well, make sure you lower your glance when you are thinking of your attack. He uses the word, Ya in order to explain to Imam, Ali, Imam Hassan, 
the meaning of lowering the 